good evening. Let's all stand together, turn to page 187, page 187 in our hymnals. We'll sing, He is Lord, page 187, He is Lord. Let's sing aloud. He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead, for He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is King. He is King, He is King, He has conquered every foe, for He is King. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is King, He is God. He is God, He is God, He is sitting on His throne, for He is God. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is God. Amen. He is God. It's good to see all of you this, this evening. Good to be in the house of God. And we want to lift him up and exalt him and magnify him. We'll turn to page 225. Page 225. I do have that right. Page 225, away in a manger. Page 225, away in a manger. Let's see. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus. Jesus asleep on the on that last be near me Lord Jesus I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me I pray bless all the dear children in thy tender care and take us to heaven to live with thee there amen you may be seated brother Sean. let us pray as we get ready for our offering at this time let's bow our heads and ask for God's blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you so much for all that you've done. We thank you for uh, giving us your blessing on this evening and drawing us here uh, to you and together, uh, Lord, uh, safely. Lord, we ask that you would help us, Lord, as we um, meet together this hour. May our hearts be uh, twined together, Lord. I pray that you would help us to open your word and to, uh, to glean much from it. Lord, we ask that you would use us to be an encouragement, uh, use us to be a testimony, not only here, but also in the community and the uttermost parts of the earth. Lord, we ask that you would help us uh, to be encouraged as we pray for one another throughout the week. Lord, thank you so much again for bringing us here tonight. Bless the pastor as he brings the message tonight. Uh, may our hearts be open and receptive to it. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
Amen. Amen. Uh, young people can be dismissed. Pray for those who are uh, unable to be with us tonight, those who may still be a little under the weather, those that uh, we know are traveling. Um, I think there's some on the on the way to get family and bring family back down. I'm not sure all the timing and the details of that, but I know it's coming up pretty soon. So I uh, pray that uh, they have travel safety in those, in those regards. And um, we know that there are a lot of people out there on the roads and it's a lot of uh, dense fog advisory. So I've been getting a lot of that. And if you're around any water, which all of us are down here, I think, um, we get a lot of the fog. So uh, pray for those who are traveling and those who are um, those who may still be en route. Uh, we want them to have that travel safety and uh, God's graces upon them as they travel. Got this a little bit backwards tonight. Let's put this over here. That way I'm not looking the other direction. We are in First Thessalonians as we continue the thought from last week. We'll go over a little bit of that again and uh, continue and conclude, Lord willing, God willing, this portion of the series, the and uh, get ready to um, dig into the next portion that God has for us. And uh, I've been challenged by it. I hope and pray that each and every one of us have been challenged by what God has for us. We're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, and I'll read verses 6 through 10. And uh, it's good to be in the house of God. Good to see uh, God's people and uh, thankful for what God is doing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6, it says, And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Paul is writing this letter and, um, to the, uh, the people there at um, Thessalonia. He said, Ye become followers of us. Verse 7, So that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God would have spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. Boy, you think uh, it's important that we get the gospel out, right? But here we're at a place where the gospel has gotten out. Uh, they have heard the truth of God's word and how uh, special that is that uh, we don't have to say a word. It's already been said. It's already been uh, instructed and they have heard it and we uh, thank God for those who are willing to speak up uh, for the cause of Christ. Verse 9, for they themselves show us, show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come, our gracious Heavenly Father, God, we just pray that you'd add your blessing to the reading and the preaching of your word. Father, I pray that you hide me behind the cross. May Christ be lifted up and exalted and magnified and glorified in this place. May we as Christians be challenged and edified and drawn closer to you, conform more and more to the image of Jesus Christ, our Savior, your Son. Father, help us as a church to be a blessing. In Jesus' precious name we pray and thank you. Amen. Now, we went over the first couple of points here, and I'll go back over them briefly. Number one was theirs was a uh, a, a, a willing faith. They were, uh, number one, we looked at the fact that they were willing to follow. Paul said there in verse six, ye became followers of us. How important it is that we have leaders that we can follow, preachers that we can follow that are giving us God's word, how important that is. We don't just follow anybody. Uh, there are some people you can follow that uh, we saw some things today in our nation. Uh, you can follow behind those things and be dead wrong. Uh, you can follow behind uh, the crowd and be dead wrong. The Bible tells us, though, hand join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. So we've got to be careful who we're following. Uh, there were people that jumped into the middle of the crowd shouting, great is dying of the Ephesians. And they had been saying things like that, but now there's this uproar. Let's join the crowd. Let's follow. They're following the wrong crowd. It's important that you know who and what you're following. Uh, it's important that uh, you be in a, in a place uh, and have your family around the word of God and the house of God and someone that is leading through God's word instead of just saying something. And there are a lot of people that say they're preachers. They they are, have the title. They have the ordination behind them. They have all kinds of things. They, they have doctrine behind their name, but they are not leading through the word of God. And Paul said, you became followers of us. And here it is, and of the Lord. And that's key. 
uh, we as pastors or teachers or whoever, the, the leaders and uh, elders and ministers in the church, those whose God hand is upon, should be leading and serving God. And as they're leading, they're actually leading people to follow as they learn how to serve God. Uh, there are some people that will come into the house of God. They won't know to bring a Bible to church, but they'll see uh, those leaders carrying a Bible. Well, why do they carry a Bible? Well, we want to be like the man of Berea. We want to see if these things are so. We want to see if what is being taught in the pulpit is actually in the word of God. We don't want to just hear something that sounds good and we're leaving on something that sounded good and that's about it. I want to know that it's in God's word and that's why we use book, chapter, and verse and not just something that I had a thought yesterday and let's go off that thought that I had. That's the blind leading the blind. They'll both fall in the ditch. I want to be led with... Um, someone whose eyes are on Christ. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be a part of a church that I, I was afraid of following the leadership there. I would not be a part of that church if I was afraid to follow the leadership that God has placed in that church. I, I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical of, well, I don't need to be a part of it. Something's up. Either they're wrong or I'm wrong. Either they're following God's word or I'm not following God's word or, or I'm following and they're not. Something is off if I cannot follow the leadership that God has given me. I want you to know that everyone is following someone. Everyone is following someone. Yeah, I support this. And I'm against what so-and-so is saying. I, I believe more like what you're following somebody. Those people that followed Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. There were 250 of the, uh, um, the, the princes of the assembly. And these are people of great esteem throughout the people of Israel, throughout Throughout all of Israel, these 250 are, are people that, man, we look up to them. Well, we have a great deal of respect for them. Boy, they are somebody, but they were wrong. And they withstood God's man and God withstood them. And they, they went against Moses and God withstood them. And that's a dangerous place to be if, if we can't follow the leadership that God has given us. then something's not right. And it should be right. We see here that those of Thessalonica followed their leadership. And in doing so, they followed the Lord. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1 says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So it's important that the leadership follow Christ. Again, um, the children of Israel messed up when they followed Aaron in the making of that golden image. That was wrong. That was not of God. That was not how God told Aaron to leave. As a matter of fact, there was um, some things that happened as a result of that, that, uh, that the people all felt because they followed the wrong thing. But we need to make sure that we're following the Lord. Ephesians 5 verse 1 says, Be therefore followers of God as dear children. A godly pastor will direct those following him in the steps and the ways of the Lord Jesus Christ. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I would hope that the pastor or the assistant pastor or the deacons or whoever God has in the leadership of the church, their steps are being ordered by the Lord. Because if they're not, then I can't follow that. I don't want to be a part of that. I, I, if it's not being ordered by God, something's wrong. So we want, we want to be very careful that we can follow what is being ordered by God. Uh, they were willing to suffer. Now, this is something that people say, hey, I'm willing to serve God. I'm willing to follow. I'm willing to obey. It. But when it comes to this suffering part now, I got an issue. <laughs> uh, I, I got a problem with this part. You mean I, I, I gotta, I've I, got to suffer in this area here? I've got to yield to this here? I've got to do that there? Hold on now. This, this is messing up uh, what I'm doing. This is messing up my plan and my agenda and the direction I'm wanting. Wait, wait a minute. All that will have gone in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And it may come in different forms. It may be something you thought um, completely opposite of what you were thinking uh, persecution is. There, there are many different aspects. There are things that we're going to suffer. But are you, here it is, willing to suffer? Are you willing to suffer? 2 Timothy 3 and verse 12 says that, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. John 16, 33, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. 
in the world, in the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. See, there are things as we follow God, as we are uh, following men that God has given us and placed in our lives that are following God themselves and guiding us and the, the church in the direction that God would have us to go. As we're doing that, there are going to be some things along the way that I didn't like that one right there. Well, do you believe he's following God? Well, yeah, I believe he's following God. Well, are you following God? Y'all lining up in the same direction. Okay, all right. Well, we need to keep trucking. We need to keep going. Didn't say it was all going to be pleasant. Didn't say it was all going to be a bed of roses. Paul, uh, he saved and boy, we think persecution is about to stop because the one that was persecuting us the most, guess what? Hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me tell y'all something. He's going to suffer many things for me. This, this was only the beginning. This, he was just one that was being used of the devil. He was just one of many because there are some that are going to uh, vow to not eat until they have slain him. That's how deep this thing is going to go. That's how serious it is. So there's going to be some persecution. He's going to have to be let down a wall in a basket. He's going to have to be stoned. And he doesn't see these things coming. Shipwrecked, bitten by a viper. Things that if we knew in the beginning, we said, oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't want that. <laughs> if, can I, do I have options that I can choose from in my service to you? No, he was willing to suffer. I want you to know that suffering and standing in faith is action. It's leading by example. It's something that others can see. I believe Timothy saw some of that in, in Paul. He saw him go through some things and endure some things and suffer some things. And he said, I, I want to be more like that right there. I want that for myself. Fair weather Christians don't stand out. They're, they're, they're there and singing as long as the sun is shining. As long as we're on the mountaintop and everything's good, everything's pleasant, oh, victory in Jesus. But when the armies of Satan appear, well, I'm out, y'all. Uh, deuces. <laughs> See y'all later. Uh, I'll catch y'all next Sunday. Uh, I, I'm praying for you. Hey, I thought we were in the fight together. You, you're not following me in this. You're not following me as I follow Christ. I mean, we're, I, we're, we're headed into a victorious battle right now. You just see the battle, but I see the victory on the other side of it. Are, are you unwilling and disobedient? Or are you willing and obedient? Because there are going to be some things that, God, I don't see the end of this thing, but I know one thing. There's nothing that you haven't purposed that is for your glory and your honor. I don't understand it, but I'm pressing on. Is this something we got to suffer? Is this something we've got to do then? <laughs> okay. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. How do you get there? I'm willing to suffer. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. I don't want to be a fair-weathered Christian. And I'm not just trying to stand out for somebody to see me, but I want you to know that people are following you. Somebody is following you and they're watching you they're watching your faith on our jobs we're watched in the community we're watched people see me it's hey preach hey preacher hey pastor hey rev everywhere i go there are people that have called i don't do i know you <laughs> I, hey how you doing um we're watched and they're well aware they see the fight you're in. They see the things going on around you. They're well aware of how you're handling it. They see your countenance. They see that expression when it's not something you'd want to be dealing with right now. And they see if you, okay, let me gear up and do this for the Lord. They're watching. Now, we're not doing it for them because we're doing it wrong if we're doing it for them. But I want you aware that there are those who are um, of little faith, I'll put it that way. Those who are younger in the Lord, those who may not even be saved yet, who are watching the big ships. Because in the storm, you find the disciples were going through that trial and that storm out there, but you also read, and there were other little ships. I want you to know the same water that's messing with you is messing with them too. 
and they get to see firsthand someone who is standing for God and living for God and serving God go through that thing. And it teaches them how to deal with it. I have learned some things from my pastor. I have ta- I've been taught and instructed some things. I remember standing in front of my pastor, tears streaming down my face. Pastor, I don't, I don't, I don't understand this one. I, I don't get this one. Help me to understand. He said, let's talk. Let me tell you what Satan's trying to do right now. Let me tell you what is really happening right now. That, this was my we're surrounded moment. And he said, Lord, open my servant's eyes that he may see. And I didn't understand it all at the end of the conversation, but I had enough faith and trust in my pastor as the leader that God gave me in my life that he was following God. And I may not fully see and comprehend and understand this thing, but I'm walking by faith. I'm going to trust what my pastor is telling me and what's in God's word. And I'm going to do it. And at the end of it, I say, oh, wow. He was right. He was right. And had I done what I saw others do, I wouldn't be where I am today. As a matter of fact, the others that did opposite of what I did are still where they were when they made that decision. Because instead of listening to the pastor, instead of following the leadership, we got in the flesh. And they went contrary. Now, either the Holy Ghost of God is upon that man and he's with him. Or he's not. Theirs was a washed faith. A washed faith. Number two, theirs was a washed faith so that ye were in samples. Now, the thing about the word in samples in verse seven there, first Thessalonians one, verse seven. It's not just an example. It's a permanent stamp. It is fixed. Like people pass by this building, they know that's a church. It used to be this, but there's something about this place right now. It is the house of God. It is uh, consecrated to the Lord. It is dedicated to God Almighty. It's something serious about this thing. People see that. They see that imprint. Well, people ought to see that imprint as you go through trials, as you go through the victories. They ought to see the imprint of the faithfulness that you have for God. It shouldn't be that, boy, that imprint, that banner's high during the mountaintop. But boy, they pulled that banner down during the during the, the valley. You know, we had um, flags at half, half staff. They were, they were lowered this week, remembering um, Pearl Harbor. And boy, we do that out of honor. But could you imagine if we were in battle? <laughs> you said, well, y'all, oh no. We're at war right now, so <clears throat> instead of waving the banner high, let's lower it. Well, I'd be offended by that. I- I'd be a little bit upset. No, a-, a lot of upset because I'm standing for America and I'm fighting for America and I believe in America. Why are you lowering the flag? Well, this is time to fight. Hey, child of God, why are we lowering the standard? Why are we lowering the banner during the battle? We shouldn't be. But we should be uh, steadfast and unmovable and always abounding. People need to see that, that permanent stamp, that mark that, boy, they're faithful. Boy, they love God. They serve God. It doesn't matter what's going on around them. They are for God. And I know that that is somebody I can look to. I can lean to. I can trust. I can follow their steps as they follow God. That's important. Sunday school teachers. Well, we had a children's pastor for my children. And we see each other. And he was on staff with me. He was assistant pastor. I was assistant pastor. And I see him and we both, we're, we're, we're fighting back tears when we see each other. Not just because we served on staff together. My children love him dearly. You want to know why? He was somebody that they could look to and they could talk to and they could trust and they could build confidence in. And and boy, they were learning and they're telling us the stories of God. I watched him as he's he's growing with them and I watched them as they're growing with him. and, And that bond, 
and we see each other and we embrace it's more than just hey brother how you doing there's something special there see he's a permanent stamp to my children and they know that it doesn't matter how old they are their children they call me today it doesn't matter how old they are i say children they're my children they're children to me but they're grown off in the military call in the middle of the night hey brother richard just pray for me hey brother richard how you doing off at campus and hey got this going on right now i'm praying for you hey i thought about you i'm praying for you stay faithful you remember how faithful you were when you were the youth pastor keep doing that over there in mobile i had those calls from children I don't know why they see that standard and we wanted to i want that flag in the middle of the fight i want it held high i want to be able to watch i want to be able to see what god's doing and and how god is using others the imprint of the pattern and the extent of the pattern it's important people can see our logo you see it and we give people a track and i've done it i've handed people this track right here and they'll say I've seen that before. That, 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 that logo, I, I've seen that. It was on Facebook. I saw that in the mail. That's on my window. Uh, we handed a, a lady a track the other day. That's actually in our break room right now. That's on the bulletin board in our break room. In our community, slowly, surely, to many people, there's a standard. They know that, hey, that when those people come through here, Whoever's in that drive-through window, or whoever's in that in that in that uh, at that register, uh, wherever we may be at the gas pump, that they're getting a track. They're going to hear about the Lord. They're used to seeing that. And how important that is! The standard, the extent of that pattern you find in there in uh, verse eight it says, "For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only." Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place, your faith to God would have spread abroad. There are churches and pastors that I know that I keep up with. They're dear to me. They've meant a lot to me. And I hear hours away. And I'm sure it's the same with you, dear friends in the ministry. Brother Lucas was here and he was working on the building and a dear friend of his in the ministry was um, um, about to pass and actually passed while we were working on the building. And he stopped and he came down from the ladder and he called his wife. And they called that pastor's wife and they were talking with her and just um, letting her know how much that ministry has meant to them. There's an extent of the pattern. This is a man that he had a lot of respect for. Uh, he held in high esteem and high regard because he was faithful, not just on Sunday morning, not just on Sunday night, but faithful. That needs to be the extent of our pattern. I want when I can't get in the pulpit anymore, people know that was a faithful man. That man right there preached and he preached Christ. He preached Christ crucified. He preached the blood of Jesus Christ. And there were people that got saved. I was one that got saved. That's what I want right there. Not just for somebody to say, boy, that guy right there was a good man of God. No, I wanted to be said when I stand before God, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But I want you to know this, there are those other little ships. They're growing. <laughs> there was a time when I wasn't an assistant pastor. And then I was an assistant pastor. There was a time when I wasn't the pastor. But here I stand now as the pastor. And by God's grace, should God tarry, there will be someone else that will one day pastor Grace Bible Baptist Church. And I want us to have that standard and that pattern where they can see it and be impressed by it and say, that is where we stand. I want a double portion of that. That's important to me. Their pattern had a profound and lasting impact on those in Macedonia and Achaia. What's the extent of our pattern? I want you to know that there's no telling how far reaching. When I preach this first portion, and we're about to get into tonight's portion, it took a little bit longer than I intended here, but um, 
When I preached this last week, there were 240 people that had viewed us on social media. 240, 242, I believe. This week it was 30 something. But what will it be this week? Do we stop because, well, there wasn't as many this week. We didn't reach as many people this week. Not as many people viewed this week. Not as many people uh, checked us out this week. 50 something people uh, tried to figure out where the church was. Well, let's, we had more last week. Let's stop. No, we need to keep going. And we need to keep going. And we need to keep going. Because we never know who it will have that lasting impact with. I want to have a lasting impact. You find the number three, theirs was a witnessing faith. As we get into tonight's portion, theirs was a witnessing faith. Verse eight again, he says, for from you sounded out the word of God the Lord. They weren't talking about everything on, in news. You can easily get in the pulpit and talk about it, all the uh, current events. No, I'm not here to talk about current events. There are some things that as, as it's currently happening and we're currently dealing with some things, yeah, we're going to deal with the issue of abortion. We're going to deal with the issue of adultery and homosexuality and lying and stealing. We're going to deal with those things. But I am going to preach the word of God. As we deal with those issues, I'm not here to just talk and have a, a soap opera about something that happened on TV today. This is the house of God. I'm not here to talk about what Russia's doing. And uh, uh, boy, well, can't y'all see what's happening over there? I'm here to talk about what God's doing because God's doing something in Russia. Russia came up. Yeah, because God's doing something over there. I want you to know that during the middle of this war, there are churches that are still over there praising God. There are people over there that are getting saved. There are people over there who are living for God. There are people over there that I had not heard of until this war broke out. And I'm hearing them sing songs like, oh, victory in Jesus. That's special to me. I, I want to focus on those things. They witnessed with the word. They say, hey, uh, uh, let's, let, let's come down and have some ice cream and uh, just talk about the stars and let's meet together in the woods and see if God meets with us. No, I'm bringing you the word of God. I'm bringing you thus saith the Lord. I'm going to tell you how Christ suffered, bled and died on the cross for your sins to save you from a place called hell. Well, we don't like to talk about hell. Well, you need to hear about it so you can avoid it. That's why I'm here. The word of the Lord sounded out. Should not this be the desire of every church, the word of the Lord going forth? Well, we can put it on YouTube too. Well, let's do it. We can get it on our website. Let's do it. Well, we can get it wherever we can get the gospel. That's where I wanted to go. Jesus said to go out in the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. This is our job as a church. It's not just the job of the pastor, but let me tell you something. There are many churches that will not go and reach others because guess what? The pastor's not there. He's not leading by example. He's not knocking doors. He's not um, leading people to Christ. He's got an audience and he's saying something and it's not really about God and they go on about their way. No, we're here to preach Christ. It's expected of not only the pastor, but also the church. I expect us to be soul winners. I want us to be soul winners. We aren't called to be silent. Uh, I, I don't know. No, 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 no. I want to be as loud as possible when it comes to the word of God. The world's loud. I mean, the world's loud, loud. We can't be loud for God. We can't speak up for God. We can't lift up our voice for God. What sounds out from us? What are we vocal about? I can't just sit here and talk about football. Well, my team's losing anyway, but we're going to talk about football. Woohoo! Yay, football. But there's a savior that died for every football player on that field. Now see here this preacher go again preaching. Imagine that. That's my calling. Hello. So I'm here to do. And that's what I will do by the grace of God. Jeremiah tried to be quiet and he couldn't. It's like a fire shut up in his bosom. I got to preach. I got to say something about God. I got to say something about my Savior. It's expected of me. Hey, it's expected of you too. What do you make much of? Surely we can make much of the word of God. Romans 10 and verse 17 says this. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
hearing by the word of God. If they're hearing you talk about everything else but the word of God. Philip went out there and said, understand this out without readers. He was reading the word of God. He wasn't reading the soap opera. He wasn't reading one of these magazines you find in these stores. And just picking it up and saying, oh, this is about football today. This one's about boxing. And do you understand that magazine there you're reading? No. Do you understand the word of God? That's important. That's why God sent me out here to you. Even if you weren't reading from the scriptures, that's why God sent me out here. And that's what we're going to discuss. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. And not only did it sound out, but it sounded out in every place. I want that to be our testimony. We're far reaching. We may be in Mobile, but there are people in the Philippines that can get online and hear how to be saved. In Ghana, they can hear how to be saved if they got on the website. They can, they can hear those things. If, if they were to tune in, they can hear. Boy, we think we're just right here and it's just a few of us. We don't know who is sitting up odd hours of the night while we're in bed asleep and they are under conviction from the Holy Spirit of God. God's dealing with them a message that they're hearing live stream and recorded a month or two ago. Well, I've heard some messages and I went back and listened to some preachers of old and boy, I'm sitting there, man, man. Man, I'm gleaning, and this was years ago. Here I am still, I'm getting something from it. You never know that witness and that testimony, that faithfulness. They were not content to just, well, we've got it, so let's keep it to us. You know, our children are saved. Our spouses are saved. We have a church. Let's just let's stay right here and keep it just us you know no nah, 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 we're not happy with that i, I don't want to just reach my community i want to reach the world for christ i don't want to just reach a certain sect i want to reach the world for christ they were well aware that others needed to know christ as well we sent mail outs five thousand mail outs lighthouse baptist church helped us with that pastor uh tool what a blessing that was. The tracks we have, Pastor Tool helped us with that. And we, are, we have been equipped to be able to do a work for God. What a shame if we're not doing it. How are we doing with that challenge to witness? Acts 8 verse 4 tells about the persecution as, as the church was being scattered. It says, therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. They didn't go crying about, woe is me. Woe is us. This is happening to us. They went everywhere preaching. See, we get it backwards. When something happens to us, we, we clam up, we shut up. We don't want to talk about it. We, we into everything but the gospel. We into everything but the, the, the commandment that God has given us to go and give others the word of God. They witnessed through their lives. Say, boy, it's one thing to get in the pulpit, but it's another thing when they see you living. When they see you living this faith, these believers witness through verbal conversation and lifestyle. Their words match their lives. You can't sit here and tell somebody you're at peace with God and you rage all through the week. All through the week, they don't see peace from God. They see rage, anger, bitterness, uh, uh, depression, and all kind of things going on. And I know that it's there's depression and things like that. I'm not trying to belittle that I'm not trying to make light of that it's very serious but people should see the peace of God when they see you as you're telling them about the peace that they can have through God and you can have peace well oh, brother you don't look like you have peace <sighs> are, are you at peace <laughs> you're good am I gonna be singed if I touch you you know, people here are saying one thing. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You say you love me. You say you serve me. You, you're laying out palm leaves, but your, your life is saying something else. You know, it still happens today in churches where we love the Lord. We serve the Lord. Well, wait a minute. This is as far as we go now. But yes, we serve the Lord, but this is as far as we go. Are you truly serving God? It's easy to say, but how far for God are you willing to go? 
because people see it and they're watching your life, your conversation, and they see those who live for the Lord. Those who live for the Lord not only speak for the Lord, their lives attest to their faith in their God. Boy, that should be us. I believe in confrontational, verbal, bold witnessing for the Lord and personal soul winning. Soul winning. But that cannot stand alone. They've got to see our stand. They've got to see our faithfulness. That's why many times I believe one plants and another waters. <laughs> and they are watching as the seed is sown. And as somebody else is telling them, boy, they're, they're picking this thing up slowly but surely. And then all of a sudden, God gives the increase. It's not of us. It's God. God does this thing. We must live holy, consecrated lives that do not contradict, do not contradict, do not contradict our message. Hey, 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 God's message. Because that's why we're here to give his message. We must live holy and consecrated lives that don't contradict, but reinforce the message. Is my life reinforcing the message, the gospel of Jesus Christ? What I've done today, did it reinforce the message of God? The way I behaved and carried myself, was it reinforcing the message of the Holy Spirit of God? That'll make you think. That'll make you think. Let me take a minute and see how I need to kind of be more like Christ less like me. James 2.18 says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith. Here it is. By my works. I want you to see my faith by what I'm doing. I believe in God. Yeah, I believe in God. Smoking a joint, drinking alcohol, and doing everything else, but I believe in God. But there's a difference when somebody says, Oh, I believe in God. And they're in church and they're teaching their children to serve God and to follow God and to honor God. That's a working faith. Theirs was a working faith. Verse 9 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. For they themselves show us what manner of entering in we had unto you. And how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. There was a change. There was a difference. They turned from the world. They turned. There was repentance. That work was a result of repentance. There, there was a, a change, a genuine change that happened in their life. Uh, did, did they never fail again? Sure, they failed. They're human. But they have a repentant heart attitude where they turn from a lifestyle of sin and turn to a, a lifestyle of godliness in Christ Jesus. Works are not the equivalent of repentance. Some people, uh, there are many people in the world that think that if I could just do enough good, that's, that's me um, and my repentance. That's me and I, I, I've earned my way to heaven. No, that's, that's not true. Works are not the equivalent of repentance. Works are the natural and expected result of repentance. It genuinely comes when a person truly repents and they say, God, I'm sorry. I've been living wrong. I am turning from this to you now because I have been going the wrong direction. I've been living wrong, acting wrong, behaving wrong, doing wrong, and I want to do everything as you would have me to do it now. That is a work of faith. And boy, don't we want to be responsible for that? No, we want to have a part in that. We need to do works meet for repentance, as the Bible says, to do works that are meet, uh, are, are necessary, expect. Expected, uh, 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 commanded, demanded of repentance. Their works were for the living and true God. Now, I can't express how important this is. A true repentant heart wants to do a true work for the Lord. They're not trying to please men. They're not trying to please the pastor. They're not trying to please the deacon or somebody else. They're trying to please God. 
And boy, I would I want our church to be a church that is uh, uh, pleasing to God. Now they had served, they had served many false gods and false idols and they had made these things, hewn them of stone and carved them out with wood and they couldn't answer a prayer. They couldn't talk to them. They couldn't do anything. They carved them out. They created their gods. But they got to a point in their life where they repented of that. They got rid of those false gods and they turned to the true living God. Habakkuk chapter two, verse 18 says this, what profit, what profiteth the graven image that the maker thereof hath graven it? The molten image and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols. It's, it's hard to imagine or believe that people created their God. They're still doing it today. There are people that have idolized people to the point of putting them up on a pedestal as if they are God. And they have idolized these people and in their mind, that is their God. People go and make their God every day on the jobs. I'm, this is my God. Money is my God. I've heard people say it numerous times that this is my God right here. I serve the dollar. And they go after that dollar bill and boy, it, it can't answer a prayer. It can't do anything for them. And many of them, they have it and they wish they never had it. But it's something they created. Boy, they theirs was a work. That was for the living and true God. I'm not going to waste time on false idols. I'm not going to waste time on this over here, that over there. I'm here to serve the risen Savior. And lastly, theirs was a waiting faith. Verse 10, it says, and to wait for his son from heaven. Whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. I want you to know they waited with patience. And that's how we need to be waiting. And as, as you're waiting with patience, that word with patience means that there's some things happening that uh, it's not really what I want. But I'm going to patiently wait for the Savior. There are some things that are happening in this world. There's some stuff happening today. I heard it, saw it all over the news and said, my goodness. What a shame. You know, I had the thought, I'm, I'm telling people to pray for our president, and we need to pray for him. But I'm thinking at the same time, how dumb of a move can you make? How, 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 how crazy can this thing get? Well, when you get away from God, and you're not following God, and you're not serving God, there's no limit. And it's going to get far worse. And while we're waiting with patience, we're going to see some things happen. And some things come about that are out of our control. That if we could change, we would change. We have no control over it. All we can do is, even so, Lord, come quickly. See, I'm, I'm not, my trust isn't in the president. I'm going to pray for him. <laughs> even more so. Because it's clear that he is not lining up with the word of God. He's not. But I know who holds his heart. I know who's in control. And I will pray for my president. I disagree with what he's doing. I disagree with a lot of what I see in America. But this is my country. Paul said, would to God that I, I, I would, could wish myself a curse for my kinsmen. Hold on, your, your kinsmen are lost. Why are you going to do that to yourself? You know, they're messed up. Well, that's just how much I love them. That's my love for America. They waited with patience. I want you to know that that means there's going to be some trying times. There's going to be some tribulations. There's going to be some tests, some trials, some valleys, some mountaintops. There's going to be things that you're going to have to exercise patience with. I've heard it said, don't ever pray for patience. The Lord may give you something you have to be patient with. And that's not something that anybody wants to endure. But to have a testimony that I can wait patiently, that's important. Not only did they wait patiently, but they waited with expectancy. 
You see, it's one thing to say, yeah, we're waiting. But if you're not really expecting it, you're not really, really, really waiting. You're not really looking. You're not really searching. And see, I, I, yeah, I believe he's coming. Yeah, but he delayeth his coming. There's a difference. See, you, you believe he's coming, but it, it's, it's a ways down the road. No, I'm, I'm looking. Uh, looking for and hastening unto the coming. I'm, I'm looking for him. I'm waiting for him. It could be today. It could be in, in five minutes. It could be tomorrow. But uh, because I'm waiting, there's a way I'm living. There's a way I'm living. Second Peter 3 verse 11 says it this way, saying then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God? We're in the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. It's not a, a might. It's going to happen. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, we look. <laughs> I'm looking, looking under Jesus, looking for Jesus. I haven't stopped looking. They were looking for him to come the first time. We're looking for him to come the second time. And I'm looking with great hope. I want you to know that you looking will cause others to say, what you're looking for? What, what's, what's going on? Man, you, you're full of excitement. Well, I'm looking for the Savior. You, man, you really believe he's coming back? Oh, I do. Man, I, I've said it, but I, I haven't been living like it. I need to start looking like it. I believe this too, because I believe he's coming back, but I hadn't. You're doing something. You hadn't even realized it. You're challenging the next person coming, the next person up to be just as faithful and by God's grace, even more faithful. But if we don't have those leaders, like Joshua told children of Israel, set these stones in place. What are these stones for? I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you about it. Well, I mean, all of that happened? Yeah, and had I not set those stones there, I might have forgot to tell you. You may not have asked me. I was talking with a pastor this morning and telling them about some of the goodness of God. And he said, that reminds me of something. And he said, uh, I went through something similar. And this happened with my vehicle and rah, 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 rah. And boy, God just, God just looked out for me. He said, God's good like that, isn't he? All the times when you think about the goodness of God and how, how good God is. See, when people hear that, it's like, man, God begins to come alive to people. They see just how real he is through us. Are we doing it for them? Yes and no. Not really. We're doing it for God. But oh, it is being done for them. Why is it so important that we live for God here? Why can't he just call us home? Why can't he just, oh, you're safe? Whoop, come on to heaven. You're safe? Whoop, come on to heaven. Because others need to see the faithfulness of his children. And when they see that, they have hope. I want to be someone that they see in a permanent mark of someone who loved God, served God. Was he perfect? Nope, far from it. But that boy loved the Lord. Uh, he, he was, what did they say of the disciples? Ignorant and unlearned men? I, I put myself in that category. But here's one thing about them. They've been with Jesus. Well, he doesn't have a doctorate. He does not. Matter of fact, he ain't even looking for one. He's been with Jesus. Get a doctorate at some point? Yay. There was a time I was preaching, I wasn't ordained. <laughs> Didn't stop me from preaching. Permanent mark. Permanent stamp. For the honor and the glory of God. Because that's what's important. And those children in the back, the children that may not even be here yet, that will one day be at this church. As they come in, they will begin to recognize something. Yeah, there's a battle going on. There's a battle that's taking place. And the banner is held high. I love that about the old war stories. 
the drummer out front <laughs> and the banner of the flag. Why we stand? <laughs> We're here. Why would they attack that flag? Boy, when people see the flag, guess what they're going to do? They're going to attack. Satan sees the banner held high. Guess what he's going to do? He's going to attack. But the banner needs to be held high. Because there are those who may be doubting in the fight. There are those who may be weak in the faith. But I'm going to tell you something. There may be those who are wounded on the battlefield. But when they see the banner held high, it does something. It does something for me when I can see there's old faithful. <laughs> there's old faithful. I, I'm good. Let's go. Charge. We can do this. Take that hill. Hey, lift high his royal banner. I'm going to stop because I'm, I'm getting too excited here. I'm getting too excited. Lift the banner high. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you. Father, that you would allow us to lift a banner. God, I thank you that you've given us an opportunity to serve you. And Father, challenge the Timothys behind us and encourage the Titus that's coming behind us. We may not see them yet. We may not have met them yet, but they're there. I believe they're watching. And I believe that they can look with great accept, expectation and great hope in what they see. God, help us to keep that, that banner held high. God, uh, let us keep that pattern held high. That others may see our good works and glorify you. It's not for a pat on our back. It's not, that, not what it's about at all. It's not for somebody to say, oh, look at them. <laughs> it's not about that at all. But it is about your work being accomplished. It is about your word going forth. It is about people seeing the faithfulness of your faithful children. Thank you for such an opportunity. For such a time as this. In the valley for such a time as this. In the storm for such a time as this. With the thorn for such a time as this. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Brother Shannon, if you'll catch that. We can all stand together. I don't know about you.